In the years since the Wright brothers' first successful flight in 1903, the role of the airplane had changed dramatically. By the end of World War I, two different technologies had emerged. Planes had reached speeds previously unheard of, well over 100 miles per hour, but were still relatively small. Airships, on the other hand, were massive behemoths that, while not as quick as an airplane, could move much larger payloads over longer distances. In each case, the opportunity for commercial air service wasn't ignored. The ability to move people, mail, and cargo in hours, as opposed to days, was simply too tempting to pass up. The most obvious hurdle to be surpassed in expanding air services was in the distance that these craft could travel. After all, there wasn't much room on board for fuel. Airships gained an early advantage here as they did not require an expenditure of energy to achieve lift, but only to provide propulsion. However, all of that was changed in 1927 when Charles Lindbergh became the first person to fly solo across the Atlantic in a plane. In a little more than a day, he flew from New York to France. In doing so, he captured the world's imagination. After all, he was the first person in history to wake up in the Americas and go to sleep in Europe. More tellingly, he proved that transatlantic flight by plane was a real possibility. Even before Lindbergh, the first airlines started operations soon after the end of World War I. However, they really took off after Lindbergh's flight. That said, the patterns of these first airlines were largely unlike the flight of Lindbergh. Rather than have long legs of flight, these first airlines would jump from one airport to another. Instead of flying across the Atlantic, a flight from Paris may stop in Scotland, Iceland, Greenland, and Newfoundland before arriving in New York. Likewise, transcontinental flights in the United States would jump from Boston to New York to Pittsburgh to Chicago and onward until San Francisco. Given all these stops, it's not surprising that these first airlines often carried the mail as often as they carried passengers. In fact, many mail carriers would evolve into passenger lines. In Europe, colonial powers saw a real advantage in this sort of flight. Suddenly, the vastness of their colonial empires was in easy reach. 